Hello, welcome to this clip in which we will talk about the import of concordance lines or concordance output into Excel. Now, there are a lot of concordance programs that you may work with and each has a different output, but they all have something very handy in common that will help you importing it into Excel. And also Excel has gotten a lot better over the years with importing data from text files or the txt files so if you have the chance to update to the latest excel version um, that is highly recommended okay so what is um, the output file from concordances they usually share a very neat property um, so most concordances will give you an output that is tab separated meaning different pieces of information will be separated by tabs and that will tell excel where to split the data into different columns so here in the output from endcong we have one column uh, with a hit number and then we have um, the left context we have our match and at the end there is another tab here that um, separates the file name from our query result, which is often also what we need if we query different files and have meta information on these files that we wanna match back to um, our data. Other outputs such as a CQP output from the command line interface will work similarly. So um, in a text processor, when you look at that data, it looks a bit funny and uh, messy, but the, what's important is that there is always a tab that separates information, even if it's very tiny. Okay, so let's look at how to do that in Excel. There are slight differences between Mac and Windows, so I'll point out the Windows version at the end. Um, you always go to some form of import. So here you go to File, Import, and then select uh, Text File. Click Import and navigate to the file that you want to import. So let's do that with the NCONC file. Hit get data. And then you get some form of a dialog box to that which allows you to specify how you want the data split or what the format is. And you also get a bit of a preview window to check, a sort of quick check if um, everything's fine. So here in almost all cases, we want a delimited um, import, which means that we specify the character that separates the different columns. So we click uh, next. And in most cases, Excel is pretty good at guessing because you can already recognize that there's lots of tabs in this file. And if, if you hit uh, space here as well, select space as well, that gives you the preview where Excel would split the information at every space um, in a text file that comes from a corpus. Obviously, that's not what we want. Um, so unselect that. And then one piece of information from, um, or piece of advice from experience is that you should always unselect the text qualifier if you read in concordances. In many cases that doesn't cause a problem, but there is always this one case where the corpus file was formatted incorrectly or where something else is going on. And this one case is usually always um, very, very far down the line. So you don't immediately recognize it. So from experience, uh, we'll leave it at that and select the text qualifier if you import from a concordance output. There are cases where you will need that, but we'll talk to that, uh, talk about that in due time. Okay, so let's select next. Here you can make all sorts of different specification, but we can leave it at the default and then hit finish. This one now asks you, where do you want to put it in? And again, the default is fine because that would just import it into the current sheet. So here we are, our imported file. The NCONC output does not come with headers. So you would select the first row and then insert a row either by clicking directly on that or the little arrow and say you want to insert uh, a sheet row. And then you could enter your header um, as desired. And there's some left context and then we have the match plus the right context and some uh, file ID. It's always recommended to check that after you import, have a quick look at whether it was imported correctly, right? So browse through 
And uh, in this case, it's not a very long file, so there's not that many hits. So you can see, okay, so it seems to be imported uh, correctly until you get here to the end. So if you see something going on here, redo um, the import and make sure that you unselect the text qualifier for this type of data. There is a second option of how you can import data. And so let's do that just for practice. You select the um, tab data and then go to import or get data from a text file. In Mac, that will get you directly to the finder window. Then you browse to your uh, data and you select a file. So let's see um, the output from CQP web perhaps. Same thing, you get the dialog box with the delimited um, selection. We hit that, it's tab separated again. Uh, we undo the text qualifier, hit next and finish. Okay, so here we have our data also again neatly separated and the output are from CQP web has um, a column already. So you have, you know already what the type of information is in that uh, particular column. Note that the CQP output also sometimes, depending on the settings of your download, um, have additional information in columns that you may or may not find helpful. If you don't want that, you can just select the column and go to the home tab and delete uh, that column. Like I said, it's um, it, it really depends on what you want to do with your data. Sometimes that information is very, very helpful. And um, personally, if I work with CQP, I always keep the match corpus position um, for as an identifier for my head, which is uh, very handy, as we shall see. Okay, here we are. We can browse through a little. Okay, that all looks fine. Um, and over the next few clips, we'll talk about something, um, other things that you can do to check whether the data has been read in correctly. So let's look briefly at how you do the importing in uh, Windows. It's the same principle, more or less, but it's a slightly different uh, location. So you can go to the tab data, then go to collect data or get data, and you want it from a file that is a text or a CSV file. Then navigate to your download and select the file you want to import. And the preview in Windows looks something like this, where you can also check um, the effects of uh, changing the delimiter. So let's set that to a space perhaps, uh, just to illustrate what you don't want, um, of course. So we will take that uh, back to the tab stop. Then you can click uh, load. And there you have your import. Now, this strategy comes with a slightly different um, outcome. So whereas in the Mac version, it doesn't automatically create a table that we talked about in previous clip, uh, the Windows version does already. So you see that here by the color coding um, in this file. And it also automatically inserts a header for you. So you can uh, change the name um, as desired. And there you go, you can start um, annotating your data. Uh, with this table import already, if there were more columns than you would expect, that's often an indication that something went wrong. So you can scroll through your file to see if um, the wrong information has been entered into the wrong uh, columns or split um, wrongly. Okay, that's it for this clip on simple imports. And we probably talk about problems along the way as well, as well as things that you would have to look out for if you're importing data that comes in a CSV file, but that is not directly from a concordancer. Okay, bye.